Welcome to Fake Users. In this video, you will learn how to give your hair or fur colour, understand about fake users and how to use them, and finally realise what the zero before anything in Blender, whether it's a brush, whether it's a material, etc, um, etc, et a particle system, what that means. So let's hop straight on over into Blender. Okay, so at the moment, as you've seen, when we render our lovely rabbit, we don't get anything. Uh, we just get this grey base material. So on the particle system itself, oh, we're not seeing anything. That's because we've got the eyes selected. We can see that in the outliner. So if I select the rabbit itself, we'll get our settings back. I'm just going to drag this up so I can see what's going on further down. Now, here we have default material, which is what it's set to at the moment. But there are no other materials assigned to our rabbit. So in order to make sure that we have hair on our rabbit, we need to, whilst the rabbit object is selected, give it a material in here. So we can go here and, as we can see, now we've created a material. And I'm going to call this mat 1 and we can create as many materials against an object as we like. So I'll just click the plus there to duplicate that and do mat two. And we should see in this drop down, we've got zero mat one and, zero, uh, and just mat two. Now the zero means it's not assigned to anything. And if we decide at any point to save the file and shut it down whilst it's not assigned to anything, it means that it will actually just vanish completely. So if you spend ages setting up a material, then you'll want to make sure that it's either assigned to something or assigned a fake user. Now we looked at this a few lectures back in the material brush, in the sculpting brushes, we, they all had Fs next to one another. So for the moment, if we want to have two materials there and make sure that we keep material one, we need to give it a fake user. Now we've all we've done there is we've switched it across. But if you hit the F key, we see that there are now two users. That's what this number two does. It means there are two users that use material one which is confusing, but not. We've got the fake user and we've got the rabbit itself because it's assigned. And if we go across here and switch over to material two, when we have a look at the materials again, we can see material two is actually assigned to this uh, rabbit itself. And the F material one is just assigned to a fake user. So we don't lose it. Now the important thing is, if you um, close Blender, it, oh, sorry, it only happens when you close Blender. So you've saved your file and closed it down. When you open it up, anything with a zero next to it will disappear. Right, so we've got two materials there. And have we got two materials here? No, so there are not two materials on our rabbit yet. There are just two materials sat in the background. So if I press plus, and we can go to this drop down, and I know it's the other one, material one. So we've got two materials in our, on our object. So now that's there, when we hop over to our, um, well, let's just give them different colors. Let's give it green so we know what's going on and give it blue. Okay, so we've got a green material and a blue material. Now, when we go to our particle system and come up, we can now see material one and material two sitting there and these particle systems are associated with that mesh as well so that's why these two materials have appeared on the material slot because both the material and the particle system are both assigned to the rabbit so if we selected one of them and just switched over to rendered mode we would see that we have a green bunny excellent so that's how we go about making sure that we have materials assigned, so we've got two different materials, and of course you can have as many materials as you like and build them up in layers, and we'll deal with that later on with the node system, but for now, you can have as many materials as you like assigned against a particular object, and then actually use them. And as you can see here, we've still got F against our material one, so it is there and it's stored. Now, if I click across here and get rid of it, go ahead and click on material one again you can see it automatically reassigns and remembers now if I hit the number two it duplicates that material very very useful very powerful 
And of course, when we're on material one again, if I just hit F again, it unassigns that fake user that it had before. And when we click here, we see that we've got material one, the duplicate of material one, and material two. And the duplicate of material one actually has a zero against it. So if I was to shut down Blender and reopen it, that material would not exist anymore. It just disappear as if it was never created. And that is, of course, the primary reason why you would use a fake user if you did not want that material to just evaporate into thin air the next time you opened up your Blender file. Okay, guys, it's challenge time. I'd like you to give the bunny coloured hair. So give your bunny a skin colour and a hair colour. You will need two different materials to do this, and if you've been following along, you'll actually have the base ones to work with. Then set the skin material as a diffuse BSDF type material, and set the hair material to, there is actually a shader specifically for hair in cycles, hair BSDF. So go ahead, pause the video now, and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop back on over into Blender. Okay, so with our funky bunny here, we're almost halfway there, but I'm just going to run through it as if we hadn't done that. So we'd have our basic bunny here. I'm just going to switch over to solid so it's not so slow loading up. So first of all, we know we want to give this bunny itself some materials. So making sure that the object is selected, we go to the materials tab in the properties window. And we're going to need two materials, so I'm just going to hit the plus twice. We don't have any materials here, so let's go ahead and create a new material. And I'm going to call this material Skin. And that's going to represent the actual rabbit's skin. Now we're not going to see this um, at first, but if we ever parted the hair or perhaps some wind was blowing, I'd want to make sure it was a reasonable colour. Now, I don't actually know what colour rabbit skin is, so I'm going to go for a light pinky colour. Now, a good way of working out, actually, whether your um, hair is thick enough is actually to have completely uh, really wild colours. So if I set this pink all the way down to this bright magenta, if the hair wasn't thick enough, I'd be able to see the magenta through it and I'd know I'd need to make it slightly thicker. Um, but I think the hair is going to be thick enough in this case, so I'll just make it a lighter pink. And it is Diffuse BSDF. Now we can go in later and use the Node Editor to make this uh, much more rich in terms of its materials, but since it's not going to be seen, I'm happy with leaving it like that. So let's go ahead and this other material, create a new material, and I'm going to call it Fur for the moment. Um, in fact, I'm going to give it a name Brown Fur. Okay, brilliant. So now we have brown fur here. I'm going to, as you probably guessed, create some brown fur. So brown obviously is not on this color wheel, so the next question is where do I get brown from? Um, and well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I'm just going to do it by eye. Um, hairs themselves are actually quite light. If you ever look at a hair under a microscope, uh, it's almost see-through. It's just the density of hairs that cause it to have a colour. Now you will have to bear this in mind if you are creating hairs on a model because they're going to, the Cycles engine is a physics-based renderer. Uh, when it comes to rendering, if you have very dark fur, it's going to look even darker than you intended it to. So I'm going to set it as this orange colour for the moment. I'm going to change this type to hair, BSDF, and I'm going to actually, before I do anything further, I'm going to move the camera around because I realise it's actually on the wrong side of our bunny. So I'm going to rotate that Z. Oh, that's rotating around there. If we set the pivot point as the rabbit down here, set it as the pivot point as a 3D cursor. Now rotate along that Z axis and look at it from this angle. It should still be pointing at our bunny. Let's just check. Yes, it is. I'm going to move the camera about slightly and just zoom out ever so slightly there. Okay, so we've got that there. Let's go and hit render and see how our bunny's looking at the moment. I haven't assigned any fluff, so I should imagine it's not looking too great. So we've got brown fur here and skin. 
great. So let's go to the particle system down here and... Oh, it's actually assigned it brown fur. That was a bit of luck more than anything else. And we've got something that's starting to look quite nice. Okay, brilliant. Now you see um, what I was saying earlier. I can see that the skin colours come through on the ears as well. So you can see what I was saying earlier. The hair is actually quite a light colour. However, when it goes, when there's a whole load of it like there is here, and this rabbit unfortunately looks a bit like a, uh, a bristle brush at the moment <laughs> rather than a real rabbit. We'll get to making that a bit better soon. Um, but you can see, even though the uh, colour is this really light colour, um, it comes out quite dark when there's a big bunch of it. In fact, if we go ahead and adjust this and make it even lighter, bring it back down here. So, ooh, an orange, really, really light. That's almost a, like a light peach. I'm going to get into colour questions here and render that out again. We may end up with not quite as light as we thought it was here. So I'm just interested actually to see how this comes out. Wow, okay, that's that's really interesting how that's come out, how it's still dark brown in the middle and this lighter colour around the edge. So you can see there that Cycles is actually doing a very, very good job at realising, well, if you've got lots and lots of hair, not very much light reaches in there or, or it gets absorbed. So you end up with a darker colour, even though you started with this quite light colour. Okay, some other things that I can see just looking at here. We've got these weird highlights here. I'm going to see whether those disappear later on when we start going over this model in a bit more detail. But otherwise, that's looking quite good at the moment. And if we have a quick look over here, just finally in the properties window here, down here we've got our brown fur and skin assigned. But these original materials that I made earlier are still here ready to use. But the moment I go and save my file and reopen it, so let's do that now just to re-highlight that point, I'm going to save my file and then I'm just going to open recent and open our fluffy bunny. So it's opened it up again and if we go back to the materials, they are gone. So please share your bunny in the discussions. I'd love to see your combination of colours. Have you gone wacky? Have you gone for a completely different style of bunny? Please share those in the discussions and I will see you guys in the next lecture.